This podcast is brought to you by LMU Munich. There are obviously different kinds of pitches. Um, so there's something like the personal pitch when you, you know, introduce yourself. There's the so-called elevator pitch. Maybe you've heard about this. So the idea is you are in an elevator going to the first, uh, to the uppermost floor of the CEO and you have about two minutes to pitch your idea. Then there's something like the investor pitch, which takes, you know, more time, 20 minutes or so. Um, and it really depends on the context um, where you are and who your audience is, but there are all kinds of pitches. Okay. So something like a business plan can be a pitch. What's called the executive summary, summary can be a pitch or even your website can be a pitch. Okay. So essentially a pitch is something um, is like a prototype. Okay. You set, you give it to somebody else in order to get something, a deal basically. And this can be anything. It can be money, it can be connections, it can be applause, whatever. Now, if you, you know, in terms of the classical pitch, it usually has 10 slides. Okay, so this is kind of the usual startup pitch that you get. Okay, and I briefly run you through these 10 slides. And afterwards, I tell you, you know, which will be important for you if you want to have slides at all. Okay, obviously, there should be a title. Um, which usually has your name uh, and maybe a claim on it. it doesn't have to be. Um, and this usually takes 10, pin 10 seconds. Hi, I'm Sebastian. I'm from Loop, whatever. And we do this and that. Okay. So the claim can be something like very simple. So we make men mental health cool or we try to avoid, um, you know, solitary confinement or whatever. Okay. What's really important generally in, for a pitch is that you have your contact information on this slide and basically ideally on every slide because you know these people from the jury or you know investors or whoever you pitch it to always see a lot of slides and pitches and you know maybe they don't pay attention so it's always good to have some kind of contact information on it. Second slide, most important slide, what is the problem you want to solve? Okay, what is the problem that you really want to tackle? Have you understood it? Is it really a pain? Um, you know, what, how, you know, how well are you in making, you know, or in, in analyzing that problem? Okay, and what's really important is, it is never a pain that your product doesn't exist so far. Nobody cares about that. Okay, you can't say that this is a problem. I'm, I'm really running through this, sorry. The third slide is the solution. So what is your solution to the problem? Okay. And ideally, as we have seen, this is being done from the point of view of your customer. Okay. And it's really supposed to be a really clear and simple description. Like we offer plastic bags or we offer a solution or a replacement of plastic bags or whatever. Okay, don't go into the technical details how it works. Try to have it as simple as possible. As it says here, your grandmother should be able to understand this. Next slide, what is the underlying magic? Okay, um, so this is more relevant, I guess, for you know tech startups or so on, and but it could also be relevant for your solution. So what is the magic that you, that you, that you need, that you trigger with your product, okay? And why are you the first one to ever think about this? Okay, why haven't, hasn't anyone else thought about this before? Next slide is usually the business model. How do you capture value? How do you make money? And it's really important that you don't show here um, simply the, the business model canvas because you don't show that to others. Uh, but you basically, you know, here can say, okay, we have a long tail business model, which means that you, you know, sell very expensive um, coffee cups, but the coffee machine is, for example, cheap, like Nespresso does it, or um, we are, and you can use analogies here. We are the Uber of whatever, of mental health. We are the Tinder for mental health. Okay, so people usually use analogy, analogies to you know, make it more easy to understand. Okay, then marketing. How do you reach your customer? What's your go-to-market strategy? How do you actually, you know, deliver the product to the people? 
Um, I mentioned this before in the business model canvas. So how do you, what's your relationship to the customer and how do you reach them? And also, you know, and this is really advanced. What's the market size, for example, and so on. Um, okay, I skipped that. So this is really advanced. Slide seven. Are there any competitors to your product, to your solution, to your innovation? And what's really important is that a lot of people still think, okay, there are no competitors. Um, and that's really good because we're the first ones to do it. And usually that's bad because that means there's no market for it. Right? If there is no other product um, that is already out there, this is usually, usually a sign that nobody needs it. Okay. Mm -hmm. and then if there are no clear competitors that are really like you, then you can think of, you know, what do analogous competitors do, right? So maybe like another app that does something similar, but in a different context and so on. So what do they do and how can you differentiate yourself from them? Or how can you, on the other hand, build corporations with them? When you want to visualize this, you can use something like this, like a competitor matrix, okay? Um, as you can see here, so what do others do and what do you all do, right? You know, what is your um, unique selling proposition, USP, or unique value proposition? You can do a SWOT analysis, you know, what are the strengths and weaknesses of your product or solution? Or again, do a Venn diagram of, you know, having different categories that basically all visualize what you can do better than others. Slide eight, very important. The team, who are you? Why are you the best team, team to, do, to do the job? Um, do you all have all the relevant competencies covered that you need to you know, make it into a reality? And what could also be interesting, do, where do you still need woman power? Is there anything, if there's a gap in terms of skills? So we need somebody for marketing, we need somebody for business um, execution then you can also say that here. Because that shows, you know, the investors or the jury um, that you really think about, you know, how, you know, what's missing from your team or, um, but also where you're great at. Slide nine, finances. Slide nine. What could be a really realistic development um, of your launch? And it's really important that you don't just show numbers, but really tell a story um, on how you want to, you know, make money, how much your costs are, and so on. Do you already have customers, and so on. But I mean, this is again, very advanced. You get all this, I mean, you, I, I already posted the slides, right? So I really jump over this. And then maybe this is also important for you. So what is the status quo? Where do you, are you at right now? And what could be the next steps? And then maybe also important, and this is what a lot of startups usually forget is what is the call to action, right? So what do you want from the audience? Is it, we're looking for people, we're looking for money, we're looking for contacts, we're looking for feedback. What do you want? Why should they, why did they just invest time to listen to you for five minutes? To make it really, yeah, make a connection. And that's it, basically. These are the 10 slides that usually startups use. Um, and I thought, since you only have five minutes, okay, you will have five minutes um, at 11.30, um, that you don't need all of these slides, obviously, right? We haven't talked about the business model, we haven't talked about marketing, we haven't, you know, didn't have time to think about competition. Maybe you have researched a couple of competitors. Um, obviously, we haven't talked about financial projections and key metrics and so on. So maybe just focus on, you know, what's your, the name of your idea? What's the problem you want to solve? And maybe you talk about the impact that you could have with your solution and talk about maybe the underlying, ma underlying magic. Why is it just the right innovation for this right time? <clears throat> and then also talk about your team and <clears throat> why you are maybe the best team to deliver that idea. So really show them that you're a, passionate about that idea. So why do you, you know, burn for that idea? What it, why are you so invested in it? If you are. 
and then maybe also show you know you don't only think about you know the, the last two and a half days but also you know how could you think about actually accomplishing the execution and going into implementation of the of the idea mm -hmm. any questions about this No. Uh, what will be the means of uh, showing the presentation? So how how will we pre present present? So, sorry. Yeah. So that also just came up. Um, so do you need to have slides? No, you don't. Okay. Um, if you want to have slides, you can really. Uh, it's up to you. Um, I mean, this is a basic structure for your talk. Okay. So you can use that structure um, or these you know these different aspects that you should cover but you don't have to put it on slides. It's really up to you if you want to show them something. Um, it doesn't hurt, but also think of, you know, this is a virtual pitch, okay? So maybe they are, you know, more happy to see you interact and see you um, and see your passion, which I made the experience that in virtual pitches, I think it's better to see kind of the people and how, you know, they interact. Um, if you are, you know, if you want to focus more on kind of the rational, and visual part, then you can also use slides. This is really up to you. 